this question says, we have been given a parallelogram here, E, E, P, G, with, uh, wait, there's B here. Uh, let me get it right up color. So there's B, E, E, wait, C. no, D, E, huh? P, G, oh, wow. this is supposed to be F. I think they made a mistake here because I there's no P anyway here. There's no P, my guy. Like stop confusing us. So that's gonna be an F. And this shape is a parallelogram, so that's good news. Because if it's a parallelogram, I mean like there's parallel lines, meaning gradients are the same, you know, and all that. So if gradients are the same, it means if you get the gradient of one line, you have the gradient of the other one. So I mean it's good, you know, good vibes. So with all this information given, let's see what the first question is, is asking us. They're asking us to calculate the length of EF, which is obviously just going to be the distance formula. So it's like, okay, get the easy marks, move on and, you know, get to the harder ones. So getting the distance here, the, the only thing you want to be careful of, and I always say this because I know I always make random silly mistakes, you know, when you're going to use things like the distance formula, just double check you know, if you can. Well, you always you always can double check. So you might as well just double check. So let's see. This is you can just say here negative two minus four, and then you square it, and then we have negative one minus uh two, and then you square it also. So this obviously this is something you can just put in your calculator, but for some odd reason I'm I'm just like ah calculator too so fast. This is going to be negative 3 squared. This is going to be 36. This is going to be 9. And then this is going to be 47. That's a weird, 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 weird number. Like, out of all numbers. It's so annoying when you get things like this. But you may as well leave it in third form. And funny enough, I, I was saying things like double check with the calculator and all that. And I feel like I'm being a hypocrite. So let me actually just get this calculator and, and just double check what I put in there. So let's see here, square root and then negative, uh, let's see here, bracket, negative two and then negative four squared, and then plus negative one, negative two squared, and then we have, uh, uh oh, three square root of five. Is that the correct answer? Ah, it's wrong. I think I made a mistake, but I don't know where now. I'm like, I feel like a dum dum. I'm like, dude, what just happened? 36 plus 9 is what? Oh, 45. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, that was awkward. But I think it's a good, it's a good what you call, it's a good <laughs> indication of how you're not just get calculated. <laughs> it's a trap. Don't do it. Don't do it. I do not recommend. So anyways, anyways, uh, let's see what we can do next. So here it says, we need to show that the gradient of EB is a one. That's an easier question as it gets, or is it? Not really, but the only thing we have to make use of is the 45 degree angle here, because they say D H X is 45. As long as this is a 45 degree angle, then if you're going to get the gradient of uh, ED, we have to be careful. But we can just use the tan formula. The, the tan formula, remember, says tan with the angle of inclination is equal to gradient. So if the angle here is 45, we can just say tan 45, and then here, the gradient, which is going to be the gradient of ED, is equal to a 1. You see. And you can see even the marker location for this question. It's a, it's a one mark question. So you don't need to struggle unnecessarily. For you to show that D is a three, right? You have to, like you have to, you know, you have to, you have to be creative, but you don't have to be that creative really because you just got the gradient of ED and you have a gradient formula. You see the gradient formula says Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1, you know? In this gradient formula, you have five things out of, you have four out of the five items. So there's one, two, three, four, five things. You have four pieces of information. So one, two, three, and the gradient.
Australia and this other one. So you can put all that in there for you to get B. You see. So what I'm trying to say is here you can just say the gradient is a one. Y2, you can just say it's B. And then Y1, you can just say it's a negative one there. And then here two minus negative two. You see. And then you can just solve for D. You see. So solving for D here, you can just do it algebraically. You don't have to you don't have to struggle. You see. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't have to struggle unnecessarily. So getting D here at the bottom, you can see we have um a four and then on the other side we have a one to get rid of the four just gonna multiply by four on both sides and then here you're gonna have the four cancelling the four there then you're gonna have three plus four. and then the one goes to the other side the value of d here is a three and then you will be good here you go d is a three so got your value of three which is what they wanted. The next question says determine the equation of GF. Getting the equation of GF now, I mean, you don't even need G. All you need is this, and all you need is the gradient, which is a one. Because the gradient of, of one here is the same there, because the lines are parallel. You see, parallel lines have the same gradient. So getting the equation of FG, we can just use this coordinate. It's X1 and Y1, and we have the gradient. And we have this formula to use. Um, what can we call y minus y1 m x minus x1? We said the coordinate that the line passes through is 4 and 2. So the y value is a 2. And then the x value is a 4. Getting the equation here, we have 3x here minus 12. And then obviously, if you take everything on one side, you're going to have Levi. y. Yeah, boo. The gradient is one. Oh yes. <laughs> oh lol, that is like epic. Thank you, thank you so much for being verbal. Because hey, as you can see, hey, I was busy flying to three here. That's easy in my own head. But anyways, let's see, let's see, let's see. Thank you very much. Um, whoever that was, I'm not sure who it was, but whoever you were. Away, away. So let's see his x and then one times negative squared and four y minus. But just so that I know, I don't know who who who, who just helped me out. You know, I can't even you know. Otherwise, I'm gonna go mad. I'm gonna be like, who was that? Like, in my life, I wonder who it was. But hmm, I guess you will let me know. Let me see if you let me know because now I'm just like in the dark. So let's see. Gonna be y is equal to x negative four plus two. Gonna give a negative two. So that's the equation of um this line. So that's the equation of f g, you know. And then our last question here is asking for the coordinates of g. So to get the coordinates of g, uh, you don't have to struggle. The reason I say you don't have to struggle is because getting things like the coordinates of g, right? It's a very common question. Now, when you get a question like this, it's obviously normally usually a scenario where you're dealing with a parallelogram. Because in this kind of situation, one thing you'll always be able to do right, is you'll always be able to use the, this line here, right? You know, what you know is with, a, with any parallelogram, this line here, right? The midpoint of this line is the midpoint of this line also. It's just the, the law of your parallelogram. So what you can do to get uh, G is, firstly, you need the midpoint of the line D, F. That's what you need to get first. You need to get the midpoint of D, F. So let's, let's get the midpoint of D, F. So let's, let's do that. So there is um, 3.5. Let's get D, F. So with D, F, right, the midpoint uh, of D, F, Let's just put the midpoint of DF would be X2. No, no, no. X1 plus X2. And then Y1 plus Y2 over 2. So with D, what is the coordinate of D now? I need to write them down. Well, I don't need to, anyways. You can just you know, use them. So it's going to be 2 
plus 4, which is going to give us an 8. And then for the y values, remember the d's are 3, right? So it's going to be 3 here plus 2, which is what? Also 3. No. Oh, 2 plus 4 and then 3 plus 2. Interesting. So here, 3 plus 2. And then obviously here, this is 8 over 2, which is 4. 5 over 2. So we just put half of the so that's the midpoint of the line um, DF. So because we have the midpoint of the line DF, right, we can now use that uh, to get the coordinates of G because EG, the midpoint is the midpoint that we just got right now. So using the coordinates of E and the midpoint, we can get G. And this is how we're going to do it. So remember, E is the following coordinates. E, that is E. I literally, uh, what's the name called? I think it's not right anymore. Oh, it is. The coordinate of E, what is E? E is negative one and negative, no, negative two and negative one. So we have negative two, negative one. This coordinate is four and five over two. Okay. Do I? So, yeah, bo. Um, please, please just go back again to how you calculated the, the midpoint, the x value of the midpoint. The x value of the midpoint, the 4. And shouldn't it be 3? The x value of the midpoint. Hmm. Are you talking about this x value of this midpoint? Yeah, like the final answer, you wrote four. Oh, four. Oh, bother. I think I'm just flying for nothing. Let me actually relax. I'm just making unnecessary mistakes now. Thank you, BK. I got you. <laughs> so the last time I was like, ooh, say that. And then you asked, and then you're like, nope, I ain't fixing my mic on again. I'm just going to keep trying. But then anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Definitely agree. Because I, I think in my head I said four times two, but it's actually four plus. So it's like, okay, fantastic. So if this is E, the one side, this is the middle, and we have G on the other end, what you need to now do is uh, to just use the midpoint formula. Because remember, the midpoint formula says that you have uh, X1 plus X2 over 2. And then you have y1 plus y2 over 2. And then, remember, this portion here is equal to 3. And then this portion here is equal to 5 over 2. That's plainly what you're going to do. You see? So you're going to have two equations. And those two equations, one is going to be equal to 3. The other one is going to be equal to 5 over 2. And then here you can just label this one x1 and then y1. Let's put those into our calculation. We're going to have here 3 is equal to negative 2 plus x2 over 2. The other equation is going to be 5 over 2 equal to negative 1 plus y2 over 2. Now we just need to solve for x2 and y2. So here, multiply both sides by 2. And then what is going to be next? Negative 2 plus this. This goes to the other side. It's like 8. There we go. Here, what do we need to do? This is like, uh, if you multiply by 2 on both sides, the 2s are going to cancel out. So you're going to have 2 here, 2 there. This is like 5 equal to negative 1 plus y2. And then the one goes to the other side, it's going to be 5 plus 1. And then you're going to have y2 equal to 8. So your coordinate is 8 and 6. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, then you're done. 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 So that's how you work out this kind of equation. And as long as you're dealing with the parallelogram, this is something you'll always be able to do. So that ends that one. And yeah, 